122 seconds of theme song. Uh, I'm Bob the Tomato. Bob starts the show without the slightest glance to see if Larry was right next to him. Um, Larry, you've got an oven mitt on your head. So, last episode he had a shoe on his head and nobody complained. Simply everyone is wearing them. Well, all the cool people anyway. Larry outright states that his best friend is not cool. Hey, that reminds me of a letter we just got from... This is the first time that one of Bob's letters conveniently coincides with the exact problem Larry is having at the moment. I think we need Cordy for this one. Larry would never have thought that if it wasn't convenient to the plot. I want you to listen to a story about three boys named Rack, Shack, and Benny who were in a pickle just like yours. One, that is racist pickles. Two, a pickle just like yours, because apparently being threatened the death sentence is exactly the same as possibly losing one friend. Anything that goes in or out of Nez of chocolate gotta come by me! Unless they own a vehicle that could easily just fly over the gate. Like this girl who owns a vehicle that could easily just fly over the gate, but it's polite enough not to. Also, I'm sure the only reason this truck can fly is so the animators won't have to bother with wheels. Because we work real hard at the chocolate factory. We start at 8 and we don't get lunch till 3. That's child labor. Excuse me, Mr. Lick, but I've got an injury. Now get back on the line. You'll be just fine. Mr. Lunt is a cold-hearted individual. Now there's no time to play, cause we gotta work on it, and it isn't very fun. Yes, it's just so tiring to just sit back and supervise as a fully automated assembly line does all the work. Rack eats the tables. I'm not buying for a second that Bob Jr. and Larry are the same age in this world, nor am I buying their uncanny ability to hover slightly above the ground. There is no conceivable way for these boxes to close at the bottom without breaking the bunny. I'll give these animators credit, they're the only guys I know who can successfully animate the emotion of dawning fear on an animate confectionery. Can anyone make sense of this final stanza for me? Someday they'll come and join us! Who's they? Are they your families that you're sending money to? And if so, what do you mean by they'll come and join us? Will they be working at the bunny factory too? And why is this worth looking forward to? We'll live in harmony! Yes, but how? What will change when they come to join you? I think there was something in the final story that wasn't translated very well here. They make 14,638 of these little fellas. Even assuming seven hour days, it's about 2,091 bunnies an hour, or 35 bunnies a minute, or one bunny every two seconds, which is exactly what the assembly line typically cranks out on screen at any given time. Okay, Matt, you win this round. Why, his chocolate bunnies are selling so well, I, I think he's gotten a little big for his britches. It's lines like this that make me realize Mr. Nezra is the only one here who's wearing any pants. Disapparating bunnies. Mr. Nezra can afford a big screen extendable television, but can't afford it in color. This morning, Nezra Chocolate shipped its two millionth chocolate bunny. Congratulations, your factory has been open for less than five months. Oh, if I could just see the looks on their faces right now. But you can. It's called walking out of your office. Has anyone ever heard of not throwing unfinished bunnies into the air for no good reason? Baby Junior has had enough of Mom's nonsense. Where are these hands going? Thank you, Mr. Nezer, for your lovely gift of chocolate. Chocolate. How would you like to be junior executives? What's it mean? It means you have to wear a tie. Check faces through a pole from nowhere. Well, what do you know? Rack Shack and Benny did what they thought was right, and it paid off. This time, anyway. Implying it won't pay off at all the next time. And it's gonna be a beautiful thing when everybody bows down and sings the bunny song. Ah, now I guess I gotta address the elephant in the room. The original version of the bunny song included lines such as, I don't love my mom or my dad, and I won't go to church, and I won't go to school. Such lines had to be removed in later versions of the episode because children started singing them in public, despite this being the song they weren't supposed to sing. So I could sing the original version for writing such offensive lyrics to begin with, or I could sing the newer versions for replacing the lyrics with such beautiful wham lines as, I won't eat no beans, and I won't eat tofu! These hands are holding a box and doing absolutely nothing with it. That's the furnace! What's it for? Well, that's where the bad bunnies go. Let's just say, in my mind, if you don't bow down and sing the song, you're a bad bunny. The fact that these guys never take legal action against their boss for threatening murder. See, this is the problem with retelling a Bible story in a modern time period. What would you do if you were them? Well, I would... I better hold that thought. Then why'd you even ask? Thank you for attending today's festivities. Not like I gave you a choice in the matter, of course. Sing the song! Sing! Think of me every day. Nice troll move, guys, but you could have just said no and your intention would have been just as obvious. Every employee lost the bunny emblem on their hats when they planted their faces in the sand. Rack, I can't move my arms! Ah, uh, Benny, you don't have any arms. Mr. Nezra clips through the pipe. 
unrealistically epic fail. And I suppose we can't use these vats of chocolate anymore. Way to waste valuable resources in the name of killing three people who didn't want to sing a song. Uh-oh. You're back! Well, that chase scene was entirely pointless. Oh, but look! My truck seems to be full of garbage! Mr. L this bridge is missing a piece. I said nobody bakes my buddies! No, your exact words Can't let you cook my buddies! You said nothing about anyone else doing it, and in this case, the laws of physics did the deed, not Mr. Nezzer. Nobody's ever gonna stand up to me again! Except for the legal system, if word gets out that you murdered people. Well, it looks like four guys in there now, and one of them's real shiny. One more thing, boss. They ain't burning up! Here's a good lesson to teach your kids. Stand up for what you believe in, and God will grant you complete immortality. Even if somebody throws you into the jaws of death, logic will take a backseat for you to survive with no damage done. Open dual door here, close singular door here, open hall with no door here. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Well, you could sing one of our songs. Because when it's a Christian imposing their songs on people of a different religion, it's A-OK. -okay. To wash behind my ears. Uh, Shaq, you don't have any ears. Every time I see a building dance, I have to wonder what it's like for the poor people inside. Oh yeah, they kind of forgot about George after the silly song, didn't they? Okay, Larry, do you see that spoon over there? If you stand on that end of it, and I jump onto the other end, it'll fling you out of there, okay? Okay, but then how do you get out? Second, Cephalufian. Cephalian. Cephalupian. Uh, so Dexter, the next time you go to Billy's house, maybe you could bring one of your favorite videos to watch instead. Note how he says videos, and not TV shows like before. Self-promotion much? It isn't always easy. But knowing you've done the right thing, sure feels good inside. Sure, at least until you've burned to a crisp in a fire for your beliefs, but other than that, good feelings all around. Wait.